certainly when, when, when you're in a hole as big as it was, because people forget. In the early days of collegiate wrestling, Michigan State was one of the premier programs in and the country. And Ohio State wasn't. Time, and they were not. They, right. They were not. On to 141 pounds now. Second ranked Joey McKenna taking on Matt Santos, a bit of a late replacement for the Spartans. And, of course, when uh, you're, you're a late replacement and your reward for getting in there is wrestling Joey McKenna, <laughs> that's, uh, well, it's not much of a reward. McKenna is outstanding. Comes away with a takedown here early. Yeah, it took a little bit, a little bit of fight for that. Uh, Matt Santos, a redshirt sophomore from Saginaw, Michigan. Went to Swan Valley High School. Normally a 133-pounder. At least that's what he's listed on the uh, MSU information. And up here taking on Joey McKenna, who is 12-0 on the season. Won the Cliff Keen, one of the captains for the Buckeyes. And, well, he is in the final season of a storied career that started, of course, at Stanford. Right. Transferred last year. A big pickup for the Buckeyes. Uh, getting third last year. Originally very from New Jersey. Very close to an appearance in the finals. Very close. From Toaco, Toaco, New Jersey. Uh, wrestled at Blair Academy. Yeah, so he's been all over the country. Yeah. Yes, he has. And he actually, uh, something of note, uh, if you're not familiar or not aware, Ohio State's uh, building a new wrestling facility. Joey looks like he got poked in the eye there. Yeah, I didn't. Now the officials look like they're consulting whether or not there was a poke there. There was not an immediate stoppage of the match. It was right. a bit odd. And, and, and I'm okay with that. If the, co if the ref didn't witness it, I'm okay with him right, not absolutely. calling it. You know, it shouldn't just be based off uh, the wrestler's reaction. No, no. <laughs> uh, nice low double by Joey. Second takedown up 4-1 to one now. So uh, Ohio State's building their new uh, wrestling facility. And Joey, his, his father is actually uh, in construction, and uh, Joey was looking for an internship. He wants to follow uh, in that career path and get into construction. And his father was able to, to refer him to the company that's building Ohio State's new wrestling facility. So over the summer, he spent uh, like three or four days a week uh, working on the site. Um, so he spends a lot of time there, and then, of course, Tom Ryan spends a lot of time there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eats lunch there pretty much, uh, I think, at least once a week. Always has Instagram live videos of him walking around the facility. Uh, he's really excited for it. It's been a long time coming. Yes, as well he should be. There are several athletic programs and others who are going to benefit from that new facility. Some are sad to see St. John go. Some Logan Stieber technique yeah. right here, arm bar half. Not One roll through exposure. doesn't get it. Looks like I try to roll through again. Well, Santos fighting for all he's worth here. And, and you mentioned McKenna's first takedown attempt was fended off for a little while. Mm -hmm. You get into a situation like this, if you're Santos, you're amped up, you're ready to go. Maybe right. those, that first minute, minute and a half, you can, uh, you can do things you may not be able to do in the latter portions of the match. Right. It can work to your detriment using all that energy up front. Yes. And uh, Joey's a very stingy wrestler. Um, kind of reminds me of... Kyle Dake, where you know, he gets a takedown, he's probably not going to let you up. Um, he's, he's content riding you out. Um, he, does, he does turn a little bit more than Dake did. Uh, he's got some good tilts. Well, he rides out the remainder of the first period, and he built up two minutes, 22 seconds of riding time in addition to his 4-1 to one lead. And McKenna will look to get himself another point here with an escape in the second period as he starts down. Well, immediately the hips high, trying to get the weight off the hands. He really likes that quad pod. Yep. I think he picked that up from Kyle. Kyle would always hit a quad pod, and him and Kyle have been friends uh, before Joe even got to Ohio State, so might be borrowing some technique from him. Hey, if somebody's got good technique, borrow it. Right. Heck, steal it. <laughs> Five to one now. Ooh, nice elbow pass by... Uh, by Michigan State there, but Joey's going to get the go-behind. Tremendous feet. Always keeps the feet moving. And now it looks like McKenna wants to go takedowns a little bit. 
right back in on the go behind and an excellent change of direction. This is where he might be looking to, to wear out Santos a little bit, um, make him use some energy, and then it might be a little bit easier to get that turn or that pin later on in the match. And for all the young wrestlers watching at home, that change of direction side to side, starting one way and then going the other as soon as the pressure is felt, that's a tremendous lesson. Kenna here feeling, I don't know if he's getting his headgear grabbed or what the case is. I think he's looking for a hands to the face call. Another go behind, he's gonna let him out again. He's got a seven point lead right now. Definitely looking for bonus points here. Well, we were talking to our, um our uh, umpires, we were talking to our officials earlier today. Joe Trauber, the head official here, and Dan Sayers, his assistant. They were talking about the hands to the face rule. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I'm not too much a fan of it. Yeah. Um, Good double. Wow. An excellent finish. From this Yeah, it, it just doesn't make sense where uh, if you accidentally touch someone in the face, that's worth as much as a takedown, essentially, if it's a, a takedown escape. And that's only a one point margin of victory. And points can be hard to come by in some matches. Yeah, the, the, certainly. Points can be hard to come by in just about any match. And, and if you give one up on something that is innocuous, it can certainly. There's that uh, go behind from McKenna in the second period. When you give up a point on something like that, it can certainly change the complexion of a match. I understand the, the theory behind it. You want to keep fingers away from eyes where there's a potential for right. unnecessary injury. The Zane Rutherfords of the world. Right. <laughs> but need a mad return here for another takedown, and there it is. That's a 10-point mark. Got the cross rest. For the, yep, try that roll through tilt. Couldn't get it the first time. Might try to take it back the other way. Well, he's really committing to yeah. it, but Santos is being pretty stingy down there. And a stall warning on the bottom man. And uh, it looks very dangerous for McKenna to be where he was there, but he had the, the arm locked up so tight underneath, there's really nowhere that Santos could have gone with it to put him in danger. Yeah, I'm not sure I really agree with that, but those types of saw calls where it's clear that the bottom man just really can't do right, anything. Right, right. There's right. a difference between avoiding wrestling and not being able to do anything. Right. Like you said. McKenna looking for the tech fall here. <laughs> Santos just latches onto him like a leech. Comes out, Joey comes out the back door. He's got that arm bar. Might be looking for the pin here. He's got a minute left. And you see him taking a peek over there at the clock, see exactly how much time there is. He's looking for another stall call as well. So it's going to be 11 point lead right now. Effectively 12 with Ryan time. So now it's 14 effectively. Well, at his rate of scoring here in the third period, he's got time to work for that tech fall. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing he's going to kick him right here, take him down. If he gets the ride out, he'll have the tech, but I think he's going to try to work for the pin. That's what I would do. Yep, there's the optional start. I think he's going to take down, ride out, try to work the pin the last 30 seconds or so. Again, trying to change directions, and well, Santos for the moment behind. holding it off. But there's the takedown. Uh, it makes it a 14-point match with, as you said there, under 20 to go. And now you probably, if you could get a deep turn and look for a pin, but otherwise. Probably not going to have time here. Yeah. Well, he's not giving up on these last 10 seconds. McKenna still wants to work for it. But he'll still pick up the tech ball. Yes, indeed. So that's going to put Ohio State in the lead. Eight to four. 